to Dharmic Evolution. Hey everybody, I'm your host, James Kevin O'Connor, singer, songwriter, audio video artist, master storyteller, and international talent agent. Hey, uh, Dharmic Evolution community page, you guys are doing awesome, man. Keep up the good work, digging it. Um, love all the content you're posting on there. It's turning into a, a hell of a community. Really appreciate that. And if you know somebody who's an artist out there who's looking for a platform like this and they have their act together, please send them over to dharmicevolution.com. You can just go to the guest tab, fill out everything on there, and submit your info, and we'll get you on the list. Love to have you on board. And we are in 68 countries. 68, that is. And uh, Vietnam is coming on hot and heavy with more than 80 downloads in Vietnam. I don't know what's going on in Vietnam. I, I got to get over there and, and see what's up with that. How did we get there? I have no idea. If anyone knows, like it, maybe you, somebody has like a, a second cousin twice removed and they're Vietnamese and they're spreading the word, uh, we love it. So uh, please keep it up. And today we're in Kalamazoo, Michigan with an awesome, hardworking, genuine rock band. They have toured from Japan to Montana to Greece and back again. They came by to visit with me today on the Dharmic Evolution to share their latest work titled Strong Enough to Last. Yes, they have been called the hardest working band in Michigan. It's Lucas Ross representing his brothers in the band known as Wilhelmina. You better strap up your seatbelts and let's go for a ride. So Lucas Ross from Wilhelmina, welcome to Dharmic Evolution, my friend. We finally made this happen. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for being here. You, you know, you guys have been around for for a while, like really um, just doing some great things in music, creating great content, creating great songs. Um, you got this stage show that's very dynamic and, and very driving. So how did you guys first get together? Where did Wilhelmina come from, Lukes? I, well, there's, there's a, we got together. Chad was playing with a, another gentleman named Tim Bankston. He was with us for the first time two records i think or maybe just the first one i can't remember anymore it's a long time ago right uh and uh he knew uh my old high school drummer and my high school drummer called me up and said hey come along let's see what's going on and i and i did and i loved what they were doing and and we just hit the ground running at that point in time the name the easy answer is that it's charles dickens cat's name that oh really? Sense. I thought it was from the Flintstones, but I, we're close, you know. I said, "Where did they get Wilhelmina from?" I was trying to figure that out. It's a cool name; you don't forget it, you know. <laughs> it's it's one of those where it, it has, you know. I think it's it it's both positive and negative in that it is sort of original, but it also has allusions. I mean, it's a woman's name, so it's a it's it's it may not be the most rock and roll thing necessarily, right? right. Uh, but, but you guys like, are so. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, Wilhelmina, so you guys started from high school. That's right, huh? I, I or, think that it's possible. No, I was, I was, I was not in it in high school. This was, okay. I was thinking my, my, my first drummer, who I played with in my high school band, was introduced to Chad and Tim. Oh, okay, and gotcha. He, and then yeah. he called me. Right. So, so give, us, give us the lowdown of um, how the band came to, like, where you are now. Are you guys all pretty much original members, like, the four of you? There's four of you, right? There's there's four of us, and only two are original. Chad Hendrickson, the lead guitarist, and myself are the two original members at this point. Okay. Uh, and then Ted Mitchell and Mickey Calhoun. Ted, Chad, Ted's been with us a long time. Mickey, not so long. Right. Um, but yeah, so we're there's there's two original members, and uh, and I, Chad's the principal songwriter. I'm the vocalist. We work on all the uh, all the music together. So right. Uh, what are your um what are your influences, Luke? Like when you were first starting out, like who who really inspired you to help craft like who you are as a vocalist and uh you know, gave you your um you know, help synthesize what you are today. I th well, I mean, I my brother had a really excellent taste in music and that helped a lot. So he was introducing me to uh the Beatles obviously, the Stones, uh Neil Young was probably one of the preeminent influences and i know in chad's case as well both of us both of us are are big are big neil fans right um, i i mean it, and then just all all genres all music it's there's there's no specific thing that i want to hang my hat on as far as vocally i sang in church 
my dad's a Methodist pastor, so okay. I, I would always sing in church, and that probably helped develop the pipes to some degree, you know? Right, right. It always does, doesn't it? I mean, church is kind of like, I can't tell you how many people who have been on this sh- uh, show who that's where they got their musical chops from, you know, house of worship, you know, and, and exactly. it's just a great place to, to really stretch out and find out who you are, you know, as an artist, really awesome. Agreed. So tell us, tell us what is the new album? Um, is it strong enough to last? Is that the new one? The newest records title is strong enough to last. That is, uh, that's, that's the, the, the title track as well. Right. It's a five song EP. Uh, we worked on that uh, from in Nashville and in Kalamazoo, here where I'm at, uh, which was uh, it was it was fun. It's 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 not the ideal way to conceive and put together a record where you're sending tracks back and forth necessarily, right? Uh, but we found it to be uh, definitely worthwhile. I think it's the best material we've written, um, and I think that frankly we got really good performances and uh, really good uh, engineering and production. Uh, and post production, so we're we're tickled with this one. I mean, we I love all these records like 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 my children, you right, know, right. not quite as much as I love my children, but you understand what I'm. <laughs> yeah, for sure, um, they do this, become part of the family, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they do. Yeah, they do. Um, the boys like this one. My boys listen to these records, and uh, and they're they're fond of this one too. It's not it, their favorite yet, but they have their you know they're set in their ways. They got time, but but do they play? Are they are they interested in music enough to play? <laughs> They're very interested in music. They're both uh, they're both actually pretty accomplished singers, uh, but we haven't really been been pushing uh, a lot of of organized music upon them. I think we're getting close to starting to work on some guitar lessons and some things along those lines. Maybe some piano. Nice, nice. Keep it all in the family, man. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, why don't we give everybody a slice and listen to "Close Your Eyes." the setting sun and the stars come out when the day is done dreams only come when your eyes are closed when you can shut out the world shut out that cold I'm drowning from the Spend too much time running away from too many things Cause a dream As much as I can When you close your eyes You can see everything When you close your eyes Close your eyes and dream When you close your eyes
close your eyes. Digging, digging that one. So tell us all about that one, Luke. What's what's the story on that close your eyes? I, I, I think it's one of those where, you know, all possibilities open up to you uh, when you close your eyes and dream, you know, and that's yeah. not just going to sleep necessarily. That's that's taking a moment and assessing where you're at and what you need to do and not rushing forward necessarily to you know, to, to, to focus and really try to concentrate on what it's going to take to get you to what you want. Right. To, to, to your dream. Right. You guys, you guys have this uh, rock edge to all your stuff, which, which I like. And I, I dig the lyrics, too. I mean, you guys, you put a lot, you know, your, your lyrics are thought provoking, which I really like. You know, it's not just all trite and, hey, let's just do the rock and roll thing. So it seems like a lot of uh, a lot of thought goes into, you know, the songs and a lot of preparation goes into it. We're, we're definitely aware of, of where we're at lyrically. Uh, it's, it's, it's always been important to us to recognize that if it's not thought provoking to some degree, it, I guess to, to sum it up, it's more the stuff that we like to listen to can't just be sycophantic drivel, although that has its place. Right, uh, but but we we prefer the stuff that makes you take a moment and step back and and reexamine the the words. Uh, it's just it's a more entertaining experience, in our opinion, to have to find the the uh, to try to find the information that you're looking for and not have it just handed out to you. You know, I I think that um, strong lyricists are are have definitely been in our in our background as far as what we've appreciated. Right. Um, and obviously, I mean, as I said, I like trite, uh, not strong lyrics as well. I, you know, it doesn't all have to be deep uh, and have depth in order to be entertaining. There's, this is That's not what I'm trying to say either. Yeah. But I know that for the most part, the stuff I love to listen to and the stuff that, uh, that we love to listen to has at least a layer of depth beneath the... the the lyrics. Right, right. Well, sometimes you just want to disengage the brain and just enjoy the power of music. We will, we that, will rock you. All right. That, and I know the whole song and I just want to be in that groove. I don't need to know anything no. else, you know? <laughs> hey, uh, tell us about, we were talking a little bit earlier about um, production and uh, give us a story on in the studio, what happens with Wilhelmina um, in the studio and who's with you helping you guys get your sound together. We have, well, I mean, Chad and I do a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, we have uh, Chad's brother, Lance, uh, is also actually, he's a great ear. He's, he's not a musician per se, uh, but he has a really good concept and a good ear uh, of what he likes, which isn't necessarily what we like. Right. And this, this is Lance Chad. Esquire, correct? This, this is Lance Esquire. See, I do my homework, man. I have no <laughs> choice. <laughs> um, but but he's another valuable asset. Uh, anytime, so we when we did the uh, the work here in Kalamazoo, our our good friend Mike Roach uh, is an ear that we trust. He's the guy that, that spins the dials and makes sure that we sound good uh, in the engineering process. Yeah. Um, but he's another guy that just has a really fantastic ear, and we've been lucky. I think that everybody that we that we've played with, everybody that's played with Wilhelmina, has had a contribution from that perspective. Everybody's had an idea of what they want. So when Teddy and Mickey get a chance to um, to get in there and and create and craft their parts, you know, they're also participating in the process. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a complete hive mind concept where we all want to participate and get the best product possible. Um, and we've been pretty happy so far with with what we've been able to cobble together. Yeah, you know, it is such a team effort, isn't it? It's like. Um, people don't really understand. I think many people don't understand the value of a good engineer and, and what a, what a magnificent component he or she is in this whole process, you know, because it, it takes everybody involved from the writing of the song to the arrangement to, you know, the band pulling it off and the engineer understanding and the producer and the whole thing. It's like, it's really amazing when it all comes together. Absolutely. You know, and you just like you can't give enough props to um, like the engineer I work with out of Nashville is um, Kelly James, Kelly James Productions. And he's um, he's just he's incredible. He's he's fast, but he's 
you know, like, in other words, when I say fast, he's preserving that vacuum of opportunity because, you know, you don't want to get caught up on the board when <laughs> these guys are like racehorses, like you guys, you know, like ready to lay it down. Come on, man, let's go, you know? And he's like right there. If you want to drop in an overdub or something, it's, it's, you know, and it's just, so really, it's so valuable. Absolutely. Yeah, it really is. So it keeps your focus like like right on the, the prize, you know. Hey, tell me about um, being on the road, touring, performing. Where do you guys uh, spend most of your time? Are you doing regional stuff now? Are you doing local? Are you doing, you know, I know right. you've been all over the place, but where we've are you been guys? All, you've been all over the place. Right now, we're really concentrating on on promoting the record and and looking at looking at it from a touring perspective. Unless you have support, uh, it's really hard to do it properly. Yeah. So we are we are concentrating on trying to put together the support, right? Um, and we're 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 taking gigs if they if they make sense. Um, but we don't have a ton on the books right now. We're we're just concentrating on on trying to make sure that uh, we're not making any nothing's falling through the cracks as far as the promotion of the of the record is concerned. We understand that touring is one of those things that helps you promote a record. Um, but we have some uh, geographic uh, uh, conflicts right now as well that we're trying to fight through. Right. Uh, but we're definitely looking forward to getting a little more, uh, a little more work in on the road. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough part is, uh, you know, getting to the gigs that you can make sure you make enough that you can power this thing through and keep it going, you know, keep the momentum going, you know, it's a, yeah, it's we're, a tough thing. we're not in a position to take a loss anymore, unfortunately. Right. And, and and touring, if it's not done properly, it's a lost leader. You're yeah. you're you're usually pretty lucky to break even. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's it's tough on the road. Hey, what is the um um what is the process for you guys when you're making a new record? Do you have like a formula, uh, a a formal process, if you will, or is it just like, hey, it just feels like it's time? Like, how does that all work for you guys? Well, it it's. For the most part, it's it's Chad Hendrickson. That guy just right. he he sits there and he and he writes and he finds some ideas that he loves and then uh, we get together and we go through these songs. Basically, it just he hits a point where he's got too much material that's that's worthy of documentation. Right, and we need to look at it again and say, okay, well, let's uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. You know, right, uh, and that's kind of what happened with with this uh, this more this most recent record is we just, these songs needed to be documented. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the philosophy. He's already got four songs that, that I'm interested in. I've got a couple that I'm, that I'm interested in. Right. And so we're, we're going to, we're going to hopefully find some time soon to just sit back down and, and start hammering out these, uh, these arrangements, you know, you and guys, that's, oh, I'm sorry. Do you guys, um, like, give me your pre-production. Like, how does it work for you? Like, you, you, you identify these songs and you go, okay, let's vet these out. We like this four or five. Let's work on these. Um, does it, do you guys get together, just you and Chad, or does the whole band get together and just jam on these and see what comes out? How does it work it, out? It winds up being Chad and I predominantly just to set arrangements and get all that kind of, of, of stuff together. And then we'll, we'll document it either just a, a crummy little recording with a, with an iPhone and, and, but that's easy to send out. Right. And we're not trying to send out a finished, you know, concept. Yeah, right. So then that gets, that then goes out to either both to Chad and I obviously want to be able to, to woodshed these things. And it never makes sense to write the song. I, I'm sure some people are excellent with this methodology, but it doesn't make sense to me to write a song, go into the studio and record it. I right. think it's much better to digest and, and continue to consume the ideas uh, and make sure that you're not leaving something out or putting something in that shouldn't be in there. And yeah. it, it takes time to call some of the, uh, some of the bad and to inject some of the good. So it's a, it, it's that aspect of a process. We try not to rush it, I guess, is the long and short of it. We try yeah. to make sure that we're diligent with our decision making, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm in your camp. I, I don't think any um, song just like it, you write it and go, hey, this, this is great. It's done. It's like, you know, like I'm big on rewrites. Uh, yep. and, and then, you know, when I come back, you know, when I finally have the rewrite done for like, the 12th time sometimes because you keep going at it and going at it and saying it's not refined enough yet and then um then like when my from my process when i go and record it with with my team in nashville i come back and i say to myself okay now i have to learn the song uh -huh. because it's the first time i played it with 
the band and I see where there's things I could do to enhance what they did now and make, you know, these, these subtle changes. And, and that's part of like allowing, I believe a song has to mature and tell you where it needs to go. You know, you have to be a good listener. I think there are, there are rare occasions when you wind up with a song that just, it just comes out on the page yeah. and it's done. You know, yeah, those are one out of a thousand for me. <laughs> man, it's, it's happened for us a handful of times. And yeah, it's great yeah. when that happens. And and usually you love those tunes. Yeah. But you also love the ones you have to work hard at. Right. I think. I mean, there's a satisfaction to recognizing, you know, from when we started, this was a great conceptual idea. But now it's a cohesive concept. That's always fascinating. I mean, I, I love, especially... Uh, in the studio, I love putting down a scratch vocal track and then waiting until just about everything else is done to put down the final vocals because you're always going to have inflections and concepts and you can sit there and kind of work through them to some degree as they're working on the bass and the drums and the guitars and making sure that this part is right and that part is right. Right. Um, and I, I mean, in a perfect world, I'd love to go back and I'd love to cut vocals again on almost all of these records now yeah. that you know, they've been in the can forever and there's little things that I hear now. Right. Obviously, that, that's not fair. Perfection, unattainable. Yeah. Uh, so you have to settle at some point in time to recognize that good enough is good enough. But you know, you as an artist, Luke, you, you, you're, that's your perception because you take that out to everybody else in your circle. And most of those guys go, what are you talking about, man? They, they, you, you crushed it on that. But I hear you. I, I'm, I'm the same way. It's like, you know, you're always striving to be better and improve. But, um, but I'm not one for, I'll look at that, but it's like, I'm always looking forward. You know, like like I I've, I've written a lot of songs and and I always go, yeah, you know, I'd love to go take another swing at that. But then it's always like, but I've got ten new songs here. What you know, it's always like march yeah. march forward. Don't go backwards. What's done is done. You know, yeah. and that's that's why we call it records. You know, <laughs> hey, exactly. I think it's time to play the other side of loneliness. Oh, I do love this one. Every day Just look around and you'll have to say I wonder how things got in this way There's sadness everywhere I see tragedy in history I read stories and they get to me I see things as they could be And things are better No wishing you did something different Cause 
other side of loneliness. That had some interesting energy on it, man. That was really cranking. Luke, what's the story on that one? Or should we so, should we call Chad? You know what? We could call Chad. And see <laughs> no, what, no. See what his thought is exactly. I, the other side of loneliness is an observation on on society. It's 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 talking about. Well, it's, it it does have the you know the 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 sun breaking free from the clouds. So we don't want it to be negative through the whole thing. Right. But it's you know there's the great line: the talking heads and their noise machines. And that one's always kind of spoken to me in that we tend culturally to be really obsessed with what's going on outside our realm, which is good, right. but it's also bad because it, it, it drives so much negativity into you all the time. You're constantly staring at this thing yeah. uh, or the news cycle and how often is there something uplifting unless you're going to Reddit and specifically to, you know, uplifting news on Reddit. They, I think there's a couple of subreddits that have that kind of stuff where it right. doesn't make you feel better to read about the guy who saved the kitten. And, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, because everything else is just so negative. I think that's part of what, where that song, at least that's where it hits me is you got to keep, you got to persevere. You got to be aware of what you're doing. In order to have a, 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 you you have to almost force yourself into a positive mindset, you know, yeah. in in today's society. I agree. I agree. You know, um, when this whole election was happening, and and you know how crazy people got. Like it, it, it was almost like we were having a revolutionary war yeah. of two political sides. And I, and I just you know I put out this post saying, you know, under under any circumstances do not post anything political on my pages you know because i said i've checked out i said i'm not involved with this and one of the things i learned from brendan bichard who's one of the one of the most outstanding uh, trainers out there right now I went to his seminar i think it was two years ago and uh you know really brilliant brilliant guy and he said hey i want everybody in this room to come up with your three words and the three words that kind of identify you and who you are and what you do and mine is love inspire and entertain so, so my three are all about, you know, when you come to any of my social stuff, you won't find violence and political stuff because I'm like, listen, you can go any TV station, any radio station, any news copy you pick up, you can get that. So when you come to my place, like you just said, like we need more places that are safe that I don't have to get all ripped apart about and just get crazy on people, you know? <laughs> I, it, it would also be very nice if people could recognize that just because you don't agree with someone's political affiliation doesn't mean that you have to hate the person. Right, right, you know? exactly. Just, exactly. It, we, we, we don't, we're having trouble with that right now. Yeah. I, I wish that the, that the person in charge would speak out and, and say something along the lines of, you know, we're all American. We need to embrace and, and, and move forward. I, obviously, he hasn't done a, a, a an address yet, so we'll, he may well say that. I, I don't right. think it's necessarily his M.O. to do it, but we'll, he may surprise me. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where this goes, uh, you know. But again, just because you're a Democrat and I'm a Republican doesn't mean that we can't, you know, help each other and, yeah. and, and make this thing work. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. A friend of mine called me about after the, the, the shooting in Vegas and said, uh, you know, you know, the laws, we got to change the laws. And I said, you know what? My, my take is on it is like we have how many hundreds of thousands of laws on the books? I mean, laws and laws. Yeah, they're necessary. But is that going to change anything? I don't believe so. What's what is going to change is if everybody like took their little circle and sphere of influence and just you know, did their own acts of kindness each day and had, had like a responsibility factor in, you know, if we all behave like that, we wouldn't have a, this madness, you know, because people are going to get a hold of, you know, if they're, if they're, if they're crazy, they're going to go and find a way to do what they're going to do, you know? So I think we have to change somehow we have to change socially, you know, and get ourselves into a healthier place. Cause we're, we're just not there right now. Working in California with Cameron Webb, who is bringing out the gems that Wilhelmina has tucked away behind the legal pads and broken G-strings. Right back to my interview with Luke, right after this message. Are you a singer, songwriter, artist, or author? Are you in need of a platform for your career? 
Well, the James O'Connor Agency is in the business of helping you broadcast your global career. If you are needing to expand your presence in a big way, such as having your music and your voice heard around the world, well, look no further. We have the platforms here to help you catapult your career like no one else can. Your artistry can be featured around the world on the James O'Connor Agency YouTube channel. Here at the James O'Connor Agency, we can expand your global career by being a featured guest on Dharmic Evolution for singer-songwriters and everyone in the entertainment industry. Or the James O'Connor Show, designed for authors, speakers, and thought leaders. Both shows are international radio, TV shows, and podcasts. Go to the jamesoconnoragency.com and find out what we can do for your global career right now. Hey, um, let's talk music some more. So let's let's do. So, so um, when you guys um, obviously you, you told me about the touring and everything. How about um, as far as social media? Are you guys all over that? Are you involved in social media? And if if so, what platforms are you are you on? We we are we're somewhat involved. I mean, Facebook. If you can, you consider that one of those. That's one that yeah. we that we kind the of biggest. probably focus on. Maybe we focus on it too much. I yeah. mean, there is. I think there's a Twitter account that that probably could use a little a little pep. Um, I I have one of my buddies, uh, Kevin Sangslin, and he's been harping on me to become more involved with these with these social media platforms. Right. Um. But of course, life gets in the way. So yeah. life is I've, very busy. It's it, it's definitely something that I think we could we could probably do a little bit better. I'll be honest. I think our yeah. Facebook uh, our Facebook stance is decent, um, but the other you know there's no Snapchat, there's no uh, there's no Twitter to speak of right uh, right now. But perhaps that's something we should concentrate. You know, it's funny. I you know I talk to people a lot about all these things, and and I've come up with my own thesis that our we we all have um, different. Uh, maps of learning in our brain because I had this one guy and he's a brilliant guy and he comes up to me and he's like you know him and I were talking about Squarespace and MailChimp and so forth and and he knows Squarespace inside and out and upside down brilliant I always struggled with it I had to work really hard to to like get some mastery on it but MailChimp came easier but for him MailChimp was very difficult and it's the same way with this social media stuff I talk to people and some people go man, I don't get Twitter at all. It's just like, I, I, I'm lost with it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't spend much time on that. But Facebook, I, I, I understand that really well. And I didn't have to work at it. It just came easier to me, you know? So I think we all just learn differently, you know? We're just yeah, processed differently, you know? But um, I, can't, I can't see being on all of them. I tried that about a year ago and it was just overwhelmingly crazy. You know, <laughs> Way too much time invested in the social media, you know? It has its place. That's for sure. It does. It yeah. does. Yeah. Hey, um, why don't we try uh, Falling Through the Sky? What do you say? Uh, that's a great track. I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. There's a lie here broken down on the floor. Just staring up at the sky Then I see a falling star Burning up across my view And I wonder what happens now To a wish that has no chance of coming true I wish that I knew What that star was going through When it was falling through the sky And it's all the end coming
title of that man i just feel like falling through the sky when i'm listening to that good song man thank you yeah you guys i, I could tell you had fun digging on that one playing it. that one that chad that was chad's baby that's on he he wrote that after having read oh what is it uh owen meany i can't remember the, the name of the book right now um but he took that one uh conceptually from from a oh he's gonna kill me he he I, I normally would remember the name of this book, but apparently not right, right. now. Uh, we'll have, um, we'll, we're going to get Chad to weigh in no matter what. I think he's going to be <laughs> on the back end of this con this call here. Excellent. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, uh, so what are the what are the plans uh, moving forward for the rest of this year? We're, we're winding down. Are you guys going to stay like touring, supporting this record? Is that the focus right I mean, now? The, the focus. That's basically the focus, and and we have. Uh, we have a, a gentleman who's helping us out, Dr. Gene Foley, who has some ideas um, that he wants to, uh, to to move us in the direction of. So the, these involve um, potentially doing some uh, some television uh, appearances. Um, we're still figuring out the locations of where to where we where, where what's convenient and what works for his vision. Um, so that's something that's uh, that's potentially uh, down the road for us. Obviously, um, always still uh, thinking about the next record. You know, that's yeah. the that's the fun part too. That's always the thing that it, that it, you know. I love playing live, but I almost enjoy the process of, of creating and uh, and working in the studio as much as playing right. live. So, right. Gene is the man. Brilliant, brilliant guy. He's got so many great ideas. Right. I mean, he's such we're, a cool dude. Yeah. We're incredibly lucky to to, to have him uh, in our camp. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. He, he really knows what he's doing and uh, he's such an awesome individual too, you know, just love getting on the phone with him and chatting, you know, we actually had lunch, uh, I guess a couple months ago and just kind of did some brainstorming and talk music for, it was one of those things we could have sat there all day, you know, it was like <laughs> getting deep in the weeds on the I, subject. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So um, tell me about, um, you know, when you guys go in the studio, um, can you guys talk a little bit about gear and, and just briefly as far as um, what kind of stuff are the guys using as far as, you know, like you, Chad, he's your lead guitar player, right? Yeah. What's he's, he? a, he's a Les Paul guy. Oh, nice. Okay. Because uh -huh. I'm hearing I'm hearing a little bit of heavy stuff, you know, from yeah. time to time. So, I mean, yeah. he, Les Paul guy, he's got this great little, uh, little rig that allows him to kind of overdrive his amp. Right. Um, right. And get and get really brilliant tones out of a not so big machine. He had a Fender Twin for a long time, which right. was which was a good beast. But again, moving that thing around when you're touring, and you know we don't have roadies. We're not we're not to that point. Maybe if we had roadies, we'd we'd he'd get the twin back. Right, right. <laughs> um, so so he has this great little rig where he just he just drives he overdrives the uh, the tubes and gets really really brilliant tones out of it. Right. Um, I play a I play a Martin. Nice. Oh yeah, beautiful guitar. She's she's gorgeous. She's been beat to hell. And, yeah. Uh, and and still sounds sweet and true. So the best uh, kind uh, when they're beat up, they they play better. You know. I, so well, this one, <laughs> this one wound up on a couch and got thrown. One of our buddies threw another buddy on top of the guitar. And oh so really? So that's a it's a Fender uh it's a Fender back now. No kidding. Um, but everything else was was saved. It's, it, yeah, that's that's Marty. He's been through a lot. Wow, it was salvaged, um, huh? <laughs> exactly. I, I, you know what? I don't want to speak for Mickey or Ted. I, I'm, I, I am, I am a. You're the singer, man. 
man, I'm the vocalist. Yeah. You know, I pay attention. But you got the best gig, though. Come on. You, you walk in with your microphone in your pocket and say, hey, oh, even, guys, how you doing? Bring, I don't even bring the mic. <laughs> I don't even bring the mic. They, they, they provide the mic for me. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's the best thing going. Hey, yeah. give, me, give me like the funniest thing or most unusual thing that, that ever happened to you guys on the road playing gigs in the studio. Is there any one moment that was just like, wow, I can't believe this just happened? Yeah, there've been there've been a, well, quite a few. I, there's a couple memorable ones. I remember driving up to uh, man, Northern Michigan. We were going up. I want to say to Traverse City, and we had this big blue, big block Ford Econoline van. I thought you were going to say you you played for Bigfoot. No, I'm sorry. No, go no, ahead. No. That would be, that <laughs> that would have been an achievement. That's the gig. Um, but we're we're hauling up there. We've got we the, the van is full. There's nine people in there. You know, we got our buddies with us, and all of a sudden the back end of the van just kicks up in the air. Like you wouldn't believe, and so we pull over, and 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 our 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 bass player at the time, Christopher Newman, gets underneath the the machine, and he looks, and and the the muffler had broken. Here's the front of the van, right? Kind of kicked down, which had thrown the back of the van. Oh up. man! Um, but he was he, he, Chris is is remarkable at many things, and he was able to rig with uh gosh i don't even know what he used he found detritus on the side of the road and he rigged that right back up in there and got us back to uh <laughs> to a spot where we could do some actual patching and fixing that was surreal that's crazy i mean it's it's a it's a miracle it didn't puncture through the floorboard or something it, it you know just caused, caused just absolutely catastrophic damage it was apparently just the right it was rusted just enough right to not, to not do that wow um, and then i remember another time that we we have a song called One Step Ahead of the Storm. This is on Far From the Current. Um, it's another great tune, but we were playing at this uh, winery, um, and we were playing outdoor. Everything is is uh, is going great, and we recognize that there's a massive thunderstorm coming in, um, and we finish with One Step Ahead of the Storm, right? You're One Step Ahead of the right, Storm. Right, right. And we broke down in about seven minutes. And I swear the last thing, you know, we closed that, that is again, big blue again, that, that, that Ford Econoline, we slammed those doors shut and the heavens opened yeah. and we were, we were indeed one step ahead of the storm. Wow, was, man. You guys got timing. Good. I'll tell you, you must be great musicians. <laughs> it's all about the timing. I think it's time to play your video. What do you say? This is I, way I, back when. I'm getting tired of who I am Singing the same old songs again Wearing the same hat that I wore Way back when I need some kind of respite I need a break from this bit Playing the same notes that I play Way back when Just changed its course Downstream round the bend Like way back when I need some kind of alibi Those notes left me feeling high Like some kind of spooky sand Like way back when Like way back when
starting to feel good again I'm feeling like myself again Singing some new songs that I wrote Like way back when I'm standing on the ledge again I'm holding my sharp edge again Tearing a hole out of the sky Like way back when Like way back when Yeah, way back when. Shot out in a barn, man. That was cool. <laughs> good song, good song. I like it. You got you almost got like a like a rough blues thing happening there. Very, very cool yeah, edge yeah, to it. There's a little bit of a blues thing going yeah, on. Yeah, like a cool, kind of a that rock cool harp line. Yeah, really, really great. Um, that was awesome. Um, your music is awesome. And why don't you give us, uh, we're just wrapping up here now. So why don't you give us, uh, our, your website so I can, we can drive some traffic to you guys, check you guys out, support your music, find out where you're playing. Well, we'd love to have you bo- visit our website at Wilhelmina.net and I'll spell Wilhelmina real quick. I know you're going to have it documented, but this yes. is a, this is a ritual for us. Okay, here. cool. Uh, W I L L A M E N A. Dot net. Dot that's net. It. Yeah, that'll get you every single uh, connection you need. You know, I'm sure that we'll have a connection to this uh, to this program as well. On yeah, there. you guys will be on our website, man. As soon as uh, the show goes live, uh, we put you right up on the website. And uh, yeah, I just want to I just want to thank you, Luke, for coming by and, and sharing these stories, these songs, this great um, energy that Wilhelmina has. And I want to wish you guys all the success in the world. James, thank you so much, sir. We we appreciate uh, you you sitting down with us and uh, and and help, helping us propel us, uh, and uh, and we look forward to hopefully uh, uh, bumping into you down the road as well. Propel is what we do, my friend. There we go. Do you ever wonder why you were created, and what you're here to do? Then the geography of the soul will help you to find your true place in this world. The music is so inspirational, including tracks such as I Want to Be Loved, State of Grace, and Ride On. James Kevin O'Connor is an internationally acclaimed singer, songwriter, music producer, entertainment agent, TV star, and a loving father who leads you to find your true place and calms your mind and soul in breathtaking ways. Buy Geography of the Soul today by James Kevin O'Connor at iTunes, CD Baby, Amazon, jameskevinoconnor.com, Geography of the Soul, a beautiful CD that you need to own today by James Kevin O'Connor. Sponsored by the James O'Connor Agency. Close your eyes. The other side of loneliness. Falling through the sky. And way back when. Writing, performing, and determined to let the world hear what great songs and great commitment is all about. I hope you guys really enjoyed the ride we took today with Luke. And I hope you will support Wilhelmina and their music. Check out their website at Wilhelmina.net. And if you have not yet had a chance, you should head over to the James O'Connor Agency. You may have heard that we write songs for authors. Very true. We just wrote and produced a song for alumni distinguished professor Scott Geller from Virginia Tech University. Scott now has his own flagship song that supports his brand, Actively Caring for People. We released the song just recently, and it's called Here to Share and Care. 
Hey, do you need funding for your next album, uh, single, video, uh, any kind of projects you have? Well, go over to the jamesoconneragency.com. Let us connect you with the how to get funded. It's easier than you think. We also want to encourage you to visit dharmicevolution.com. Check out your show and blog profile right now. If you've been on the show, you are now on the site. Luke and Wilhelmina, they are now on the site, and people from around the world are logging in to see and hear all about Wilhelmina and their music. That's it for me today. I'm your host for the Dharmic Evolution, James Kevin O'Connor, singer, songwriter, audio video artist, master storyteller, and international talent agent. And as promised, I hear I'm going to share this song with you guys. See, I'm here to share and care also. It's Professor Scott Geller's new anthem, Here to Share and Care. I'll catch you next time. Did you ever stare into darkness And look for the light Have you ever felt compassion That makes your heart come alive A simple act of kindness Will nurture a spark in your heart You've just sown a seed To help someone in need We all love And actively care We all have this special yearning That's burning inside I think it's called love It's all about love Step out of your comfort zone And please do not be afraid Comfort and kindness Are virtuous foundations laid Know what it feels like To be lonely, hungry and cold A smile will arise As you give yours away We should feel this way Every day Yeah.